Okay, for today, we're gonna start with some review. So we're gonna talk about linear programming in a minute, but first we're gonna move that off to the side. And would everybody please just start by graphing something super simple. Would you graph y is less than or equal to 2x plus one? And then you make a little graph like this with an x and y, and you go, okay, Where's the y-intercept? Sage, do you know what part of that is the y-intercept? Um, the, the one. So everybody go to one and you put a dot there. Now, if you're smart enough to pull up graph paper really quick, that would really make your life easier. You don't have to, but it would be easier because we'll have graph paper on the test. Okay, now, would you agree that two is the same as two over one? Why'd I put that in there? Because it's the slope. Do you know what the slope is comprised of? Um, rise, over rise over the run. Good. So the two is the rise, and the one's the run. Tuck, tell me where to go to make my next dot then. You go up two over one. Up two and over one. And I put my next dot. Talon, the next dot, where do I go? Up two, over one. Up two, over one. And I put my next dot. Okay, so I draw my line. Should my line be solid or dotted? Sebastian, solid or dotted? Solid because it's or equal to. Solid because it's or equal to. Very good, draw a solid line through them. Next, you're supposed to shade it. Atis. Can you tell me, does the less than there make you think under or over? Under is correct. So we shade under it like that. Okay. Now that was not super easy, but how many of you feel like, yeah, I could do that. Raise your hand if you're comfortable with that. Okay, good. Now let's do an, one more line on the same graph. This one though, is just y is less than two. Try to figure out where that's gonna go. There's no x, which is gonna freak some people out. Well, here's the spot where y equals two. And here's a spot where y equals 2, and here's a spot, and here's a spot, and here's a spot. That's the way I like to think of it. Those are all spots where y is 2. Should I make it a solid line or a dotted line? Dotted. dotted. Now, why? Because there's no or equal to. So, a dotted line. Question, JP. Uh, my, like, like, writing tool on Notability. If I were you, I would go and disconnect, disconnect the pen or whatever. Because I know, I've had the same thing happen to me before. Try to find it, uh, the other option is under the triple dots, sometimes you can do disconnect. See if you can disconnect anything that's connected. Or you could turn off your Bluetooth, which would be one last way to kind of like force it to use your pen, to use your finger again. If none of those work, I'd turn my iPad all the way off and turn it back on again. Let me ask you that, just no, no, no judgment, but when's the last time you turned your iPad all the way off? Uh, probably like a week. Okay, it definitely should be shut off. It usually fixes it, because like after a while, it's like you staying up for th five days. You could still function, but you'd be pretty sketchy at that point. The iPad does the same thing. It, it wants to be turned off every night. And I know a lot of you aren't doing that, which is fine, but it starts to get sketchier and sketchier. Glitchier and glitchier. All right, now less than, I'm shading underneath it. Now what area got double shaded? That area got double shaded. And if I extended my lines out, I could extend it even further. Does that make sense to you? All right. Now there's another kind of question we gotta be ready for and that's elimination. Most of you are good at substitution. For some reason, people know that better. 
But if I do elimination, it's actually way faster if you know what you're doing than substitution is. You draw a line under it. And in my opinion, you should always just think of this as combining them straight down, kind of like adding them. And you're hoping that they'll just cancel like that. See those two? They just go, boom, they're gone. And they eliminate, hence the name elimination. Okay. Boom, they're gone. And I'm adding them, combining. Combining y and 6y makes 7y. Combining 10 and 8 it makes 18. Final answer, y is less. Oh, wait, no, it's an equals. I just wrote it kind of tilted. Equals. And then divide by 7. 18 divided by 7. There's my answer. Now, in the real world, your answers will usually come out nice. You know why? Because if the answer comes out to like 18 divided by 6, it would have been 3. And then you could have stuck 3 in the other equation super easy. We don't usually give you nasty fractions because they're hard to back solve. All right. That was called elimination. Let's see if you can do it when I step up the difficulty level a little bit. Because this is more like the test. 2x plus 10y is equal to 12. Negative x plus 4y is equal to 3. Now, can I just add those straight down and have something eliminate? Nope. So what should I do first? Yes. Times the red line, the bottom one, by 2. Very good. Multiply each of these by 2. Why did you do that, Ansley? Um, to make it negative 2x and negative 2x and 2x. So that those guys will cancel. Put on the brakes. Brake buyer. Can you tell me what to do? For the next term, JP? Um, I canceled the two things I circled. They're gone. You yep, so that's 8y. And then there's this 10y. And then I'm combining them together, and it makes 18. 18y equals. Mariam, can you do this next part? Yep. 18. 18. What's y equal to then? How many of you had y equals 1? Awesome. Then you back solve. If it were me, I would do the blue one because I don't like that negative on the x. I mean, it's not like I'm afraid of it, but I'd rather do the blue one. It's my choice. So I'm going to take the 1, and I'm going to stick it in one of the equations. I choose the blue one. You'll get the same answer no matter which one to stick it in. Have you already done it? What did you get when you put the 1 in the equation? 2x plus 10 times 1 <coughs> equals 12. What did you get? I got, um, you should get it right. Got 1. You are correct. So 1 and 1, and we usually make you write the answer as a point. What does that mean? It just means 1 comma 1. If that was the only question on the test, how many of you feel like you could, you could rock that? Okay, good. That was called elimination. Now let's do one with substitution. This one's just a little more of like, like being careful. There's a lot of like little algebra stuff you gotta do right. So let's try one like that. 6x minus 3y equals 12. The next one we're going to use is uh, x plus 4y
negative 7. Okay, strategy. Do you get if I add straight down, nothing's going to cancel? Next thing. I know some of you are like, I'm going to multiply the bottom by negative 6. It's not actually a bad idea, but here's the thing. On the test, we can tell you, you must use this method. And so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to say, you have to use substitution. So you can't just go multiply the bottom by negative 6 and make stuff drop out. That would have been elimination. So if I have to use substitution, then I need to substitute one thing into the other equation. So you look for what we described as the lonely variable. What's going to be the easiest thing to solve for? This x, I'm going to underline them with different colors, this y, this y, or this x. The yellow, the red, sorry, there's no red underline. The yellow, the blue, the black, and the green. One of them's the easiest to solve. Mateo, what do you say? The yellow. I agree. We solve for the yellow one, the x that's all alone there. And how do we solve in the, what's the first step of that? Talon, you're trying to get this solved for x. First step. We will, but first we have to solve it for x. There you go. That's actually a y, but I, I, my, my writing's sloppy. So I subtracted 4y from both sides, and x is equal to negative 7 minus 4y. Now, do you have to put the variable first? You don't have to, but actually most people will do better if the variable's first, especially when it ends up being the slope it's in the, and you need the x first, you know? So I would do it this way. Okay, now you've got x. See how this is going to be messy? That has to go in there. But I think I made it work out so the answers are nice. The answer is like 2 comma 6. Everybody use substitution and see if you can solve this thing. And the people that are careful, they're the ones that are going to get the A's on this test. Because there's a lot of little things you could do wrong. You just have to be extra careful. This will be a careful test. I am not super careful naturally. My way of like kind of dealing with that is I try to write out every single little step. Okay, I understand. All right, so negative 4y minus 7. And then I'm going to write out the rest of this stuff, bringing it up here. Minus 3y equals 12. Now I'm going up, which is not ideal, but hey, I don't have room underneath it. So negative 24y, negative 42, minus 3y equals 12. And I'm still going up. And now this and this go together. And I'm trying to go slow so I don't screw up, but I could have already. Is anybody like agreeing with me though that I have negative 27y minus 42? Anybody get that same thing? Okay, good. And then I have to add 42 to both sides. Negative 27y equals adding 42 plus 42 plus 42. 54, and then dividing both sides by negative 27, and that's half of 54, so it's really 54 divided by negative 27, divided by negative 27, y equals negative 2. Did anybody else get negative 2? All right, you were the careful people. Congratulations. That was not easy. I get that. You think there's a mistake? Tell me if you think there's a mistake. What do you think? What happened to the x for 6x? Okay, what happened to the x? So let's go back. 
we replaced the x with what the x was equal to. Because see the x down here? We solved this in, so in the yellow circled equation. We solved for x. And then we replaced the x with negative 4y minus 7. So that's where the x went. It got replaced with negative 4y minus 7. And then we got all the way down and we got negative 2. And if you have a nice clean whole number or an integer like that and there's no like fraction, it's probably right. You know what I mean? Okay, so there, I'm done. And I've turned in my paper and the teacher cries a little bit and marks are wrong. Because why? Yes, Mondale. I didn't solve for x yet, so I got to go solve for x. Which equation? Doesn't matter. So I'll take the simpler one. The one I circled in yellow was a little simpler. So I'm going to take that one over here and go x plus 4y equals negative 7, and I replace the y with negative 2, negative 2 right there. So then this is x minus 8 equals negative 7, adding 8, adding 8, x equals 1, boom. x equals 1, y equals negative 2, 1 comma negative 2. Okay, there, we reviewed for the test. You're pretty much like fresh now with that's the stuff you got to know for Friday. Is that everything? No, but is, is most of it. Okay. Now remember, we got all day to review tomorrow too. And then we take the test Friday. All right, so what's the last thing, server? I want to get to the like new stuff. All right, here's the last thing. You got to be able to take words like this and turn them into equations. So we did a problem like this, but we're gonna do this one a little differently. And let's see if you understand the process. You don't have to get the whole thing, that's the R4, but you will have to be able to write an equation for something like this. I feel like I did an example in my other hour that they liked way better than the surfboard thing. And I, th I think we're gonna end with the surfboard thing. Okay, so let me give you one more that's, that's kind of normal and easy. You guys have all had money in your hands. You've had quarters and nickels and dimes and you've had, you know, you can relate to those. Imagine I handed you a pile of change. It just dumped a pile of change on your desk. And let's say that it was 10 coins. Everybody write 10 coins. I dump 10 coins on your desk. And you look and, and you're like, oh, all it is is quarters and dimes. Well, then the first thing you'd do to write equations for that is you'd say, well, I have Q and I'm gonna let that be quarters. And this may seem dumb, but it's a really important part. You gotta say what your variables mean. I'm going to let Q be quarters and then take a wild guess what variable I'm going to use for dimes. D. D. Yes, D for dimes. Then you can write an equation already. Even though you don't know how many quarters or how many dimes you have, you know there's 10 coins. What's the equation? See right there, some of you can write this equation and some of you can't. If you can't, you better really listen close to what the people say. What do you think this equation is, Luke? You got it. Now, could that have been nine quarters and one dime? Yeah, that would add up to 10. Could it have been one quarter and nine dimes? Yeah, that would add it up to 10. There's lots of options. So do you get from this one equation, I can't tell how many quarters you had. Okay, but if I give you another equation, then we could use a system of equations to solve it. All right, let's say I told you, let me think, that you had a dollar and 30 cents, a dollar 30. Your coins add up to one dollar and 30 cents. Would you agree 
That could be all dimes. Yeah, I could have zero quarters and 10 dimes. No, 13 dimes, sorry. 13 dimes and make a dolly 30. Okay, could it be like a couple quarters and a bunch of dimes? Yep, there's some combo that would work though. Now this is a next level problem, but I think you can do it. I'm gonna give you this outward, outline. It's still Q's plus D's, but there's something more than that. And it adds up to $1.30. Who can fill in the missing pieces? Ooh, somebody already knows. Monroe, what do you think? Four quarters, three dimes. All right. So if I put four quarters, if I said this was four and this was three, would you agree that four quarters would be a buck and three dimes would be 30 cents and that adds up to $1.30? Awesome. He's got the answer, but that's not what I'd write for this equation. You've got the answer. You figured it out. It's four dimes and three, sorry, four quarters and three dimes. But wait, this is the equation you should have written. Oh, what do you think, Tuck? 0.25Q plus 0.1D. 0.1D. Why would you need that? Because each quarter, each Q is worth 25 cents and each dime is worth 10 cents. And you know what happens when I solve this system of equations? We get what Monroe said, which is that you'd have four dimes and four quarters, sorry, and three dimes. All right. This last equation was important because you're not always going to be able to figure it out in your head. So you got to be able to write this equation so that you can then use substitution or elimination or graphing to solve it. So really look at that close because I'm going to give you another question that's a lot like that. And we'll see if you can write me two equations. Okay. All right. Imagine for a minute I had a whole bunch of bills in my hand. Okay. I had a whole bunch of bills and some of them were big like 50s. And some of them were small, like ones, okay? But when I really looked close, it was like I was fresh off the cash machine. And so it was e I only had 50s and 20s. It's the only kind of bills I had in this stack of bills. 50s and 20s, okay? And there's 10 bills. I have 10 pieces of paper in my hand. And they're all 50s and 20s. Write me an equation. You should be able to write the first equation. There's 10 bills, and there's 50s and 20s. Well, first thing you gotta do is define variables. Are we gonna use Q's and D's? No. So figure out your variables, then write an equation. And then I'll tell you one more fact, and you'll be able to solve and see how many 50s did I have. All right, so what's the first equation? Before I tell you more info, what's that first equation? Sage, give me something that you think, something plus something makes something. Okay, how about this? We should define our variables. You remember I said I, we had 50s and we had 20s? What do you think, what, you get to pick, Sage, what variable should we use? F for 50s. I like it. That's the first thing you do is define. I'm going to let this letter mean this and this letter mean that. Now, Taylor, can you tell me something plus something makes something? T plus half equals 10. Only because I have the F listed first. I want to say F plus T equals 10. Good. Now... You remember that other equation that like had how much each one was worth built into it? Monroe, did you catch how Tuck did that? We put a number in front of each. All right, so let me tell you how much total it adds up to and then you see if you can write the equation. The total amount of money we have 
is $100. You should be able to write that equation now. Okay, do you agree it equals 100? Do you agree that it has an F in it and a T in it? But it can't just be that simple. It's not F plus T equals 100, or we'd have 100 pieces of paper. We don't. How many of you think you know the rest of this? 15 minute warning. Really, is it really only that many people? How many of you think you got this? All right, Sansegrin, give it a shot. All right, hold on. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, again, like the answer is I have two 50s and one, or no, and zero 20s. But that's not what I put here and here. You went and just solved the equation in your head, which is great, but there's actually more than one way to do it. And yours, if you just used two 50s, it wouldn't actually add up to 10 bills. You see what I mean? So we don't wanna to try to guess a combo that works. We wanna think of what's a 50 worth and what's a 20 worth. Who feels like I got this? All right, Ellie. Yup, because 50s are worth 50. Keep going. 20. 20T, and then what do I put in between them? Right here. Plus. Plus. That's the equation. So what was wrong with the answer of 250s? It didn't add up to 10 bills. Yes, it made $100, but it wasn't 10 pieces of paper. And we knew I had 10 bills in my hand, 10 pieces of paper. So this was a good guess and it's a combo that works, but it doesn't work in both equations. So then how do you solve this thing? I personally love elimination, but you might not. I personally would say, let's multiply these all by negative 50. Do you know why I'm doing that? Think about why I'd be doing that. Because then these would cancel. You see what I'm doing there? I love to do elimination. You might rather do substitution, though. And negative 50 and positive 20 makes negative 30t. And negative 500 and positive 100 makes negative 400. Well, it's not coming out nice. Pausing for a second. It's a time to fess up. We got T equals 13.3, but the teacher screwed up. I thought that I had made it work out nice in my head, but there's no way to have 10 bills that are either 50s or 20s and have it add up to 100. I just screwed up. I made an impossible problem. You can't have it be $100 worth if you've got 10 bills there. Unless you use 10, no, you can't, you just can't. I can't think of any way it could work. So I'm coming out with this weird number, like you can't have 13.320s, Mr. Server, there's no way. You can cut the bills. Yeah, that's true. Be worth much. Yes, and, and yes, you'd be defacing currency, which technically is illegal. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Um, for the one before the coins. Yep. I'm confused because it didn't add up to ten. You're right, and I, I. So were you just doing? I'll just. Credit? I was just saying that he was right that four quarters and three dimes does add up to a dollar thirty but it doesn't add up to 10. That's why we didn't want to do it that way. So he found a combo that would add up to $1.30, but if we solve this system, we can get the answer. All right, so, so the dangerous part, both times people that guessed a number 
in their head were making it add up to the right dollar amount, but they weren't making it to be the right number of coins. You know what I mean? So that's why we have to write two equations and then solve the system. All right, so I'm going to help you on this one. We're going to make it fairly simple. We're going to say S is going to be standard models, standard surfboards, and C is going to be competition. I'm going to pause for a second. Okay, I just had a kid check, and the key actually uses X and Y, so we're going to use X is standard and Y is competition. Now, I kind of like S and C, except S is not an awesome variable because it looks a lot like a five when you write out an S. So anyway, X is gonna be the standard, Y is gonna be the competition, uh, and yay, I have given you my variables. That's really important. You gotta always know that. Okay, next. It says that to make a standard board, it requires six of fabricating and one for finishing. So I'm going to have one standard board X will require I'm going to pause for a second. Okay, so if I want to make one board, it'll require a, a whole bunch of hours of finishing uh, and fabricating. And so I'm going to have six hours for the fabricating. This is my fabricating equation. Fab. It's going to take six hours of fabricating for my standard board and eight hours of fabricating for the competition boards. And those have to stay less than or equal to for fabricating, it says 120. Let's see if you've got what I, how I just got that. What's X again? Standard boards. It takes, for fabricating, it takes six hours to make one of the X's. It makes eight hours to make one of the Y's. And your total fabricating hours, remember we're doing fabricating now, has to be less than or equal to 120. See how I got that? Okay. Now how about the other kind of hours, which are finishing hours? The finishing hours, that takes, well, I gotta find it here. One hour for finishing on uh, the standard boards, plus three hours of finishing, sorry, I, Got that really messy there. Three hours for finishing on the other one, so that's plus three y, and that adds up to 30. Less than or equal to 30. Can I get the back? Now, if at this point I were to graph these, why would I always have to stay on this side of zero? Because can you spend negative hours on something? No. Why would I always have to stay on this side of zero? Same thing. I can't have negative hours. That's two of my lines. And then one of my lines is going to go like this. And one of my lines is going to go like this. And when I get it all shaded in, this will be the final answer that gets double shaded. Now, I've done that really quick. The key does it more cleanly and neatly. But if you could do all of that, that's extra credit because that's a lot.
But if you had to write an equation like this, or like an equation like I gave you for the dimes and the quarters and stuff, that's part of your test. This whole thing, to do all of that, and then graph it, and then see these corners are called the, the optimizing. The corners of that are where you optimize your equation. If you can do all of that, there's going to be extra credit. Okay, so last thing, your objective. Do you get in business? Your objective is to actually try to make money. If you go sell Slurpees on the beach and you pay like $100 for your Slurpees and you sell them all and you only got $100, do you, get, you just wasted a lot of time? So the objective is to make a profit. So your profit will be, and it says, they make 40 bucks for each standard board. Can I just write 40? No, it depends on how many standard boards you did. So that's times X. Plus they make profit of 75 for each Y. That's called the objective function. Your objective, in this case, try to make a profit. If you sell one of these boards, you're gonna make 40 bucks a profit. If you sell one of these boards, you're gonna make 75 a profit because they probably sell them for a lot more for the competition board. All right. And then one of these spots here, here, or here would give you the most profit. Now I'm not going through all of that because again, there's a couple of you that will be able to figure that out. You'll be like, well, this spot here has got three of the competition boards and five of the standard boards, and I can see how much profit that is. So some of you will be able to figure this out. But we're just kind of weirdly telling you the R4 ahead of time. But to be able to write these equations, that is part of the test. All right, so there's one last one, and it's your homework, which is to try to write the equations. Remember, we gave you the key so you can check. But I just finished this good enough. You can be done with the surfboard question. Try the other one. If you don't practice tonight, do you get it? It'll be like this never happened. You'll completely forget what we did today. Do a little bit of practice by trying to write those equations up. And that's all I got for you for today.